My folks were a novice uh, workbook mod five and we're looking at problem four. Again, as an alternative, I'm providing you with a cluster analysis program that uses the k-means approach algorithm for clustering analysis uh, that can be used rather than the uh, than the program we have in uh, Excel Miner. This is a neat little program that I found online. This is one you can have and take with you regardless of whether or not you ever decided to get uh, more sophisticated software for data analysis. So let's take a look at what this little program will do. I'm going to post this online so you'll have this available to you. But here's the, the, uh, the program. The program uh, is called K-Means and uh, you'll be able to do cluster analysis uh, just like you would with any other data mining sort of software. So the first page is how to use a workbook. It's fairly simple. You have to input data. You have to input it in a particular way. It needs uh, text fields in the rows and in the columns, the rows representing observations. For example, here you see item one, that's an observation. And then we'll have, uh, this is a result, so you won't see this here, but we'll also have, I'll go to the data here, we'll also have uh, text for the various uh, quantitative measures we're gonna use for clustering. In this case, we're looking at the, again, at the uh, college problem, cl clustering the college problem. We have a median SAT and we have an acceptance rate. This is two variables, you could use three or four or five uh, but I want to demonstrate it with two. Why? Because I want to create a graph of what it, we get at the end of this thing. So creating a three-dimensional graph uh, is difficult. Creating a four-dimensional graph is, well, you're in, you're in hyperspace at that point. I've only been there a couple of times, but I'll tell you, it's not easy to get back. Here you see a, a button. This is the all-important button. This is what the author, a fellow uh, named Nielsen, uh, from South Africa, very clever young VBA programmer has provided us. This is the guts of the program. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our data and paste it into an area. I've color coded the area. Here are the titles of the colleges or the observations. Here are the uh, values that are going to be used for variables, quantitative variables in the analysis. And so I cut the data out and I paste it in here. The first thing that the I just initiated the program, it says, Where, where's your data? This is a very flexible program, and that's what I like about it. it he has provided just all, everything you need to do uh, a wide variety of things, but not over-encumbered you with all kinds of other things. So I've identified the, the, the area, including the titles. You need to include those. Now you specify the clusters. I'm going to use three clusters. I hit OK. And you see what's happened is a cluster analysis page has been created. And it's done. Here's a cluster analysis. Amherst belongs to cluster one. Barnard belongs to cluster three. Columbia belongs to cluster two. Let's see where William and Mary is. William and Mary also belongs to cluster two. So we're going to take this data, the centroid data. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to our data page and I'm going to paste it in over here. Now I uh, previously competed or completed the problem before uh, but I want to start from scratch here so I'm going to grab the data again this part of the data copy it paste it here so now we have all of the the, the data in one place the thing that we need to do now now that I have my centroids, is we need to sort this thing. Sort this data on the centroid, right? Because that's what we want to do. Separate all the ones, the twos, the threes. So we go to uh, sort capability. I want to custom sort. I want to uh, sort by the centroid. I hit OK. And here we go. Here are all the ones, all the twos, and all the threes. Now I want to create a graph of this. Why? Well, because it's 
you know, people think in terms of, uh, of graphs and, and pictures. So I've already done it. Here, here's the graph that I've got. You can see that there are three clusters. Cluster one is this uh, diamond. Cluster two is this red circle. Cluster three is this green. And I've also included the centroids. One of the things that we got from the, the data that I should have copied was the centroids and bring it back over to your data. So you, you're gonna need those because you're gonna to wanna to put those in your graph, the centroids. These are, this is just a spot where the center of this cluster is right here. The center of this cluster is right here. And the mathematical center of this cluster is right here. So how do we create a graph like this? Well, we've done this before, but what we're gonna do is we're going to take uh, we're going to take all the cluster one data first. Okay. I'm going to grab it here. And I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to chart, scatter diagram. And here's my initial uh, cut at this data. Now, all I have is one series here, one group of data. A series is a group of data. I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the select data and I'm going to edit this thing. I'm going to say, I want to call this thing CL1. Hit OK. So here's CL1. Now I want to add these other clusters. Uh, I'm going to copy, well actually I'm going to go to the data again, I'm going to go to select data again, and I have the capability of adding a series. I'm going to add a series, and guess what I'm going to add? CL2, right? What is the X value? What are the X values? Well, the X values start here go all the way down till I get to the last two. What are the Y values? Y values start here and go down to the last two. Hit OK. Hit OK. And look what's happened now. I've added another cluster. And of course I'll do that to the last cluster also. I will also add the centroids. Let's see how we add the centroids. Well, I'm going to create I'm going to add another series, and I'm going to call it CNTRD1, and I'm going to go find the X for cluster 1. Here it is. Then I'm going to find the series for, uh, the Y for cluster 1. I hit OK, and look what's happened uh, in our data. Uh, I have a new uh, a new uh, spot here. It's hard to tell. You have to be very careful about these things. But this wasn't here before. It's in a different. It's a different color. Uh, so I'm going to colorize that or change it. I'm going to go to Format Data Series, and I'm going to say go to the little paint bucket. I'm going to go to the markers. I'm going to uh, open up the marker options. I'm going to go to Built In. I'm going to find a different marker. I'm going to find this X. I'm going to make it bigger. And let's see what, what has happened. There it is. There's my centroid. And of course you'll want to play with that and figure out how you want to distinguish that. That's kind of a faint sort of a thing. But you see the gist of what we're doing. We're adding these series. And uh, we're adding the clusters and we're adding the centroids. I've done most of the work here actually our graph, uh, our graph behind it is the whole thing uh, so you can see what has been done and how it's been done. So uh, again, a very clever way of, uh, I think, of that this young author has, has been able to give us just the basic information and then we have to take over and do the rest. We need to know uh, what we need to do after that. It's always good, I said, to be able to present a graph, in this case a two-dimensional two graph. Uh, that's all we need because that's all we have here. All right, that's the end of this alternative cluster analysis for problem four in mod five.